different. As a matter of fact, I am different. I'll never be the same. I'll never, ever, ever, ever be, well, whatever normal may be for you. I will never be that. This is Yaya, and you're listening to Dream Chasers Radio right here on Blog Talk Radio. But you're also listening in at WKDW 97.5 FM in Northport, Florida. Real Community Radio, as well as New York City BombBabyRadio.com. So you're going to be listening to a lot of different things and a lot of different people today, and a lot of people are going to get this. And I am so excited to have all my guests on the show today, and we're going to go through so many different facets of music today. So get ready, and here we go. Who's on the line? Young Pre. Hey, hey Young, how are you doing? Yeah, oh, it's good to have now? you on the show. I'm doing good. Thanks I'm doing good. Me. How are you? I'm How doing you? great. Great. Long day. Still in the studio. See, that's what I was saying earlier about, you know, being a musician and being in, uh, you know, doing your thing, man. It's some, it's some work involved with that. So you have a, a new song out. Tell us all about what's going on with Young Cree. A lot's going on with Young Free right now. Um, currently working on a, about two mixtapes. Uh, one with an artist from my group, uh, Dexman, and also a group mixtape that we're working on that we plan on releasing probably in the Novemberish time. Um, other than that, man, I'm working on my first album. Uh, the song that you have is not going to be on my album. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely working on my first album. It's going to be sold on iTunes. I'm just working on distribution and everything. So mm-hmm. life's just really busy shooting videos for marketing and everything. Like, getting a taste of how it is to really be a part of, like, the rap game. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just, I know what you mean. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really a rap game, but I, I you know, the, being a part of the music and, and being part of the radio i know the competition that's out there it's a lot it's steep but yet people still love individuality and you making your songs um the way you do is is important definitely important yeah, definitely definitely but so, um i do go ahead i was gonna say yeah other than that you know kind of keep the grind going Mhm. Mm-hmm. Well, we, you know what, your mixtape. Tell us all about that, and what's what 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 can we expect from from you on that? Ah oh, man, the mixtape I got coming out with a uh, Dex man is Late Nights in the Stew. Um, we should be dropping the first single within like the next two weeks, and it's called Molly and Candy. Um, mm-hmm. Somewhat of like a like a party thing. We make a lot of party music, but. Uh, this was more so the experience of us just being up late nights, all of the late nights. So we was like, why don't we just make a CD called Late Nights? And there's no like one topic that it really sticks on. It's more so you just get a glimpse of what we go through, or at least what's going through our minds at three, six o'clock in the morning. Oh, um, goodness. When we out here making the music. <laughs> three and six o'clock in the morning? I'm asleep. Five, well, not five. three o'clock. At 3 o'clock, I'm still up in the studio. I got you. At 3 o'clock, I'm, I'm still in the studio. But at 6, I'm gone. There, that's it. <laughs> done. <laughs> the method is, you know, if you sleep, somebody else is doing it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, so you I know that. you got a race for me. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, yeah. Nah. <laughs> no. No, you know, and I'm in the music industry too. Okay, so I understand your passion. I understand it, but at six o'clock in the morning, I'm no good to me, anybody else, nothing. I'm I'm no good. I can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. Long, but I can do <laughs> we that both in, We're in the same area, but you know, different paths. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but definitely. You you have a new song that you sent to me, and I want to go ahead and play it. Set that up. Set that up for us. Um, this is a song I did with another member of our group. Uh, King got far. Shout out to King. He's out in PA taking care of his mom right now. But uh, this is just you know regular day session type thing. Smoking and blunts. Excuse me for you listeners that you know don't smoke. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. this is just 
you know, depicting that that part of the day for us. And uh, kind of got like this West Coast swing. Uh, by the way, heads up, I'm looking at working with Nipsey Hustle soon and trying to get that in order for the album as well. So be be on the lookout for that too. Awesome. And that's F B S I. What does that stand for? F B S L. Few blunts and some liquor. L. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> All right. You go catch All show. right. You heard it right here on Dream Chasers Radio. Here you go, FBSL. Jeffrey Diamond 92, so for one more drink, no reference to that juicy juice. Uh-uh. Young Creek, been the truth. Uh-uh. Got that watermelon white out, take the shot to the goose. Ooh. Tell her hate, hate, and, and ran, lose the two. Don't be rude, Ooh. go to the fridge, you get you a brew. All good vibes while getting high, that's the move. Much gratitude to the booze, can't reach my altitude. Blunts and some liquor, now my mind's flowing. A few blunts and some liquor, got this ready show. A few Blunt to some liquor, sweat, and bowl. Hit the L bottle, fell down your cheek, she jumping. A few blunt to some liquor, got me drink low. A few blunt to some liquor, got me ready to show. A few blunt to some liquor, sweat, and stay bold. Hit the L bottle, fell down your cheek, she jumping. Smoke a dummy when I pull up, tell them to get in. I know the end, you wouldn't. Ain't no need to pretend. Got some blunts, I got some swishes we can put in the bin. If you want, I'll bring my nines. I can put on your friends. I've been walking on the cloud like I was floating or something. Spot me in the cloud, act like they know me or something. Blowing nothing but the loud, I swear I'm smoking the onion. You just know I ain't fronting my same color as bunions. Pop a bottle of the liquor, pour a cup if you want it. Only time I let her stay if I... In the morning we do this damn near every day I swear my mom don't condone it I swear you can't clone it I'm only here for the moment What you trying to do? Let him slide through Can't do it like I do Been this way since 9-2 Little shorty 5-2 Back, 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 back thighs too Faded off the liquor And you know we getting high too A few blunts and some liquor Now my room is flowing A few blunts and some liquor Got this ready show A few Blunt to some liquor, sweat, so stay bold. Hit the L bottle, down, now your cheek, she jumpin'. A few blunt to some liquor, got me quick flow. A few blunt to some liquor, got me quick show. A few blunt to some liquor, sweat, so stay bold. Hit the L bottle, down, now your cheek, she jumpin'. Awesome. Cool. Uh, you know what? You know what I like about this song? What you like about it, yeah? It's truthful. It's just straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no lie, really here good. it is. Huh? No fibbing, no fibbing on this line. <laughs> no, no, just straight up. There it is. <laughs> I like that though. Because I mean, that's thank life, you, you know? You. That's life. Yeah. Why do people always try to censor life? You can't really censor life. I mean, you can censor words, you know, and stuff like that. But the way the situation is and the life and, and the way it's, it just kind of went about and how it happened, you can't really censor all that. You have to tell it like it is. You're right. And that's what I like You're about right. this song. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Man, you so wouldn't you... believe, man. Oh. I'm, a, I'm a broadcast major, so it's like all I really know is censorship and 
not saying the wrong thing to the public and how you get captured by the public. But with my music, man, I might mm-hmm. opt into it. Like, I don't want to follow none of those rules. It's like, fuck the rules. Excuse my language. <laughs> Well, I hear you. See, this is my radio show, and and I, you can just pretty much say whatever you want because <laughs> I this is I, you know. But when I do, when I do air it, and I know what you mean by censorship because we are on WKDW ninety seven point five FM in Northport, Florida, and uh, we okay. we broadcast uh, pretty much from uh, St. Pete all the way down to probably equals around there and that's a few million people and i can't have any curse words or anything like that on the show so when i go through my show i have to kind of try to censor as much as possible i mean you know there there's some words that kind of escape you know but hey oh yeah you <laughs> but i won't give you, you know, that we'll many you don't have to worry about that <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. But you know, okay, so you started started out, and you are one of how many sisters? Uh, it's four of us. Wow. Um, four kids? Me, uh, the king got bars, the next man, and bird. Uh, what's unique about us, you know, we all from different areas. We met up down here in Kentucky, by the way. Uh, we're mm-hmm. from Houston, Kentucky, and you know, Kings from Philly, Birds from Jersey, Dex is from Louisville, I'm from Lexington, so it's like you get this mixture of all these different comings of lifestyle and different sounds and everything, and we just mesh really, really good. Mm-hmm. No, but I was talking about up uh, as a child and having to stand out. How many sisters and brothers do you have, by the way? Oh, I had a, I have four sisters and two brothers. My Possibly goodness. Possibly a third. I don't know if he's really my brother, but we call him brother. <laughs> well, you know, those are the infamous ones. It's okay. <laughs> but goodness gracious. So did you get beat up a lot? Because <laughs> I can just imagine yeah. this. <laughs> Listen, I, I ran track all the way up into college. And uh, let's just say I, I got the speed from running from beat. <laughs> Um, oh. wasn't too many girls <laughs> in my family besides my sisters, Oh, it seems like it. As uncles and cousins, there's a lot of boys, so you got made tough mm-hmm. real soon in life. But um, luckily, you know, I have a big family too, so I, I'm six foot by middle school and 185, so I didn't have to really deal with getting beat up for too long. I was able to beat up the older ones. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. So, okay, so you you kind of got that, but where where in the line? It's, I'm going somewhere with this. Where in the line were you born? Were you the youngest? Were you nearly? Or were you in the middle? Were you the first? Well, as far as my mom, she has three kids, and uh, my dad has three girls and two boys. So, I'm the middle kid as far as in my mom's household. But out of all my siblings, I'm the second to youngest. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, see, that is important in the line because this is this is where the first kid gets all the, oh, you're not eating off the floor, you're not getting this, but you're just, you're the one, almost the last where you got probably hardly nothing. <laughs> so you kind of yeah, have to, working, you know. I started working at nine. I was cutting grass to make money for Pokemon cards. <laughs> 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 I, I've been working for a minute, and I remember pretty much through my whole high school career, like, I bought all my clothes, my shoes, and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. We we wasn't that fortunate or anything, and my mom didn't have much. You know, she is ill, back problems, so she couldn't work. So I've been working for a long time as far as supporting myself, like, mm-hmm. that's just part of it, especially when you are one of the last, you know. Life gets ran out when you have that many siblings as far as funds and everything. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, and that's why I said, you know, you you're used to going after what you want yourself. Yes, definitely. Yeah, and and that's that you know that that actually uh, carries over into your music. When you write your songs, what is one of the things that you do as a writer? Well, you know. The start of this usually begins with the blunt. <laughs> um, 
Man, usually when we write, like, it's like a group of us, even with our friends, like, maybe eight to ten people, and you just go off, like, the atmosphere, and then I may get into thought about, like, previous things that's happened in my past that, you know, can relate to the moment that I'm in in this moment, thinking maybe I would never be in this moment. Um, that's usually how my writing process goes. It's real storytelling, like, so everything is really just things I've already happened in life. I'm just reprocessing it as far as my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you got the mixtapes coming out. I'm independent artists, am I correct? Yes. I don't know for how much longer, but as of now, yes. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So you you have to do, you know, I, I've always admired people who go after what they want in life. And that's why we started Dream Chasers Radio. Well, one of the reasons we started was uh, my own selfish reason. I needed inspiration. And so your inspiration, where does that come from? Besides, you know, life, I'm talking about like a person. Is there someone, a mentor or someone that to in life that actually taught you that life is about going after what you want? Yeah, I mean, I got a, I got a dude I call my OG. I won't put his real name out there. But, um, yeah, I mean, he it was things that I already thought. He just taught me how to really attack it more and be consistent with it. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been very driven to, like, you know, just, you know, do what I want to do and make a good life for me and my family, my homies and everything. Didn't really, like, take nobody having to preach to me or mentor to me. Uh, my parents divorced when I was, like, 9, 10. So, through, like, my high school career, I didn't, I wasn't much involved with my dad. So, as far as, like, having somebody to push you and tell you to do it, like, I've really built that within myself and just who I was around. And that's how I got the type of attitude I got about chasing this dream. But yeah, as far as mentoring, yeah. nobody really besides my OG I got right now. And he's he's just giving me, you know, good info and vibes off of that. Just how to be better in life, period. Not necessarily mm -hmm. as far as chasing the music. He he believes in it a lot. Like this this guy believes in it a lot. He thinks I can do it. I know I can do it. So that's where my mm -hmm. motivation comes from. Mm -hmm. How important is it to you as an artist, as a person, um, to have that that momentum, to have that person behind you, always helping you, always being there for you? Uh, very important. You know, financial situations, he always get my back, like, let you know if I need help, you know, let him know. Mm -hmm. Usually, probably won't do that because I'm so stubborn, but... Yeah, it's a good feeling to know that somebody's looking out for you. And it ain't just him. I got a lot of people that look out for me, so mm -hmm. that's an even better feeling. It's like my friends have become my family. It's not just friends. Like, we family. We always going to take care of each other and make sure everybody's good. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Now, you know, you have uh, you have the uh, other uh, Snapdog TTC? Yes. Uh, Snapdog is the first continues. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of my mixtapes that I don't know how many new fans will get to hear because those are probably about to come down off the net, so you better grab them before it's too late. Mm -hmm. um, more like mellowish and kind of like this song that you just heard, but on Snap Dog, it's more so me getting into like the more aggressive side of my rhyme scheme and those type of emotions. So it's like a real intense mixtape. Mm -hmm. Type mixtape. Um, think of a type of emotional feeling like that. What's his name down there in Florida? Um, uh, Ace Hood. Okay. That those that type of style. You know what I'm saying? As far as just being aggressive with it, that's what Snap Dogs about. And the thirst continues okay. just represents. You know, I've been doing this for years and years with my boys, and still ain't quit yet. So it's like thirst continues. Mm -hmm. Right. Thought of like just imagine like a comic book. <laughs> Snap dog mm -hmm. continues. Awesome. You, you, when you when you're thinking about your your music and you're thinking about everything, what is the biggest accomplishment that you can think of personally you've made from point A to where you are today? 
Um, biggest accomplishment? Probably. I have to say radio, like the first radio play. That was probably, I got the first spin last year in Detroit. And, man, the feeling of just being able to hear yourself on the radio, like, it's amazing. And also brings reality into the light of, like, yeah, you, you posted it, so keep on moving forward and you're going to get it done. Mm-hmm. That's probably, yeah. as of right now, my biggest accomplishment for me personally. Awesome. Now, I mean, you know, this thing that is coming up for you um, with Nipsey, how is that going and, and, and what do you expect? And I mean, it, I mean, it's just it's wonderful to work with people who've already done it, you know, who've already been uh, there and you're aspiring to go to where they've been. Uh, what made you think about working with them? Man, I've always just been a big fan of them, period, like. His whole rhyme scheme, what he's rapping about, you know, a lot of similarities. But, uh, man, his fan base is just legit. It's real. I don't know no other rappers that can sell their CD for a hundred and he got a thousand motherfuckers. Like, that's, that's a lot of passion as far as how people respect his music. So, when I went searching for, like, my first future for this album, like, I've been talking about it for almost a year now. I'm trying to work with him and I just start plugging the situation and we'll see how that goes. But it was like, if anybody, him first, you know what I'm saying? And he probably has no clue who I am, but, man, I got mad respect for this dude. Like, he really does his thing. Mm-hmm. Wow. wow. So, looking forward to that, what what do you have in mind for that actual project? Mm-hmm. Probably something similar to what they just heard. As far as mm-hmm. beat selection, mm-hmm. like I said, it's Snap Dog, so I can't really give any details as far as what yes. type of song it'll be. <laughs> but just know if it's uh-huh. with him and me, like it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be turned up. Like mm-hmm. if you ain't fuck with me before this, you gon' you gonna definitely mess with me after this. And I know he's gonna love right. it. I just hope that he really brings on the opportunity and we can make this happen. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to get wow. any details on it. Just know I'm already plotting it already. Really. Yes or no. I may <laughs> even, if he knows me, I may even have to make it and tell him, you should have been on it at the end of the track. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. But it's going to be hot mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, when when you when you talk about your music and and you know and you get someone that says oh yeah I followed you and I know about you oh my gosh I can't believe I'm talking to you has that ever happened to you and when it did and if it has or if it will how does that make you feel? Well, it hasn't happened, but I feel great. <laughs> uh, we just opened up for DK and Cash back in May and uh, I say probably about two to three weeks after the show. They actually started following me, so I was like, ah, yeah, that's a good feeling, you know, as far as, like, the capacity they own in the game, like, yeah, that, I, I feel like that's love right there, like, you didn't have to reach mm-hmm. out and follow me and see what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying, but right. you liked it enough to see what was going on. Right, right, wow. It is it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Where can people reach you? Uh, you can find me at youngprenext.com, YouTube, GSCITV, uh, get on SoundCloud, uh, Young Pre, or you can search for the group, GSC the Wolfpack. Um, iTunes, Spotify coming soon, Instagram, Young Sice, that's Y U N G C I S E. Check out the newest mixtape from the group at gscthewolfpack.bandcamp.com. Um, really banging mixtape. We got a couple of reviews on that. Just search it in your Google. We'll pop up for you. We're not a mystery like that. But, yeah, that's that's where you can find me at. Oh, my mm-hmm. Twitter is Young Precise. Don't forget the precise. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, I have... I have so many questions, and I love to ask questions. I I think that's probably why I I started the you know the radio show because I ask the silliest questions sometimes, but sometimes they're very good, and that's you know that's where it is. But my question to you is today, you know, from 
the moment that you decided that you were going to do this, what mind frame did you have to take on to accomplish where you are today? Kids, <laughs> the fam, um, <laughs> man, that, having kids and everything, I got to a point where it's like, do you want to be the guy that works for the man and mm. barely makes anything, or do you be you want to be the man that goes out there and takes it all? Mm-hmm. And that, that's the type of mentality I want to have. I don't want my kids seeing me come up stressed out about making money and trying to support them. So I want to make a path to where it's nothing to take care of and support them. Hmm. So that's a big deal. That, that's that's really that's big, big for me, man, because I came up in a struggling family household. So I want to do mm. as much as possible to not have that situation for my family. And also so I can live to be 90 out here. I'm not trying to die at 50, 70 because I'm so stressed out about trying to get through life. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And so you have kids now being a role model and being daddy and daddy, daddy, and the kids looking at you. Um, what kind of a, of a role, I mean, you know, role do you want them to see you play in everyday life and in, the, and in your music as well? I mean, as far as everyday life, you know. Just being there, like, be, always being able to be there. Like, I want to take my family with me when I do tours and stuff like that. Like, my girl always talking about, oh, you're going to go on tour. I'm not going to see you. And I'm like, you're going to be there with me. Like, I love y'all to death. But as far as, like, the music, man, I've even thought about, like, what I'm saying and what I am captioning in my music, how that will affect them. But at the end of the day, I always want my kids to know, you know, you got to tell your story. So if my story is really off the chain. I'm sorry, but I'm going to raise you to be better than what I was. So that's where we nailed that in the book. Right. And, and your su- your suggestion to other people with children, um, but, you know, in the music industry, in the rap game, what is the biggest thing that they have to look forward to as a parent and as a, as a musician? Biggest thing to look forward to, uh, your, your kids being – overly proud of you and your success, you know what I'm saying? Knowing that if you do this for them and you work so hard to make this happen for them, like, that would be the best moment for them to just really realize, you know, my dad, he's the stuff, he's the man, like, that's the greatest feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm. Wow. You know, it's, it's something, because I have children as well, and it's something to see them when you're on stage or when you're up there and you're singing or you're rapping to see their eyes all aglow oh that's my mom my dad you know uh what is the what is the funniest thing your children has ever has ever said to you concerning your music because i know kids can say the darndest things uh i don't know i guess the craziest thing for a while we were doing this wolf pack thing was howling out on the tracks and just randomly one day both my little girls just they hit me with the ow ow what's that and I never realized <laughs> so hard so they like crack me up go on my Instagram I have like a little wow. video of them doing it like it's crazy but that's when yeah. I'm like man they really sit here watching me do this so being a parent and doing yeah. music you know it's it's possible like people say oh you can't do that it takes so much time my kids sit there with me when I'm working on music. You know, they're my inspiration, so I have them right there with me if need be, and that's how I get it done. So, man, this, for you guys out there that's rapping and got kids, don't get discouraged and think that you can't do it because you got to be family man, daddy man. You can make it happen and give them the same time. Mm. And, and that's a great message, and that was the next thing I was going to ask you. What would you, what, what you say to others who have that? I'm reading your mind. You, I'm reading your mind. You, <laughs> <laughs> you are right. You are right. You can do it. It does take a little bit of extra uh, go get them. Um, it does take a little bit of uh, planning, and it does it does take a few naps during the day so you can stay up at 6 o'clock in the morning and do it. <laughs> I don't even get those. Um, I don't even get those. My girl be on my back all the time. I'm like, you need to sleep. And I just can't help yeah. it. Like, pressing. I'm pressing. Well, when you're, like, you got to get this done. Well, when you're young, you can do that. When you get older, it's like your body says, no. 
<laughs> I will no longer cooperate with you. <laughs> well, you know, um, making music, I don't think it ever stops. I think, you know, you retire, but you retire from the rat race. You don't retire from the music. Um, yeah. As you go along, you have to come back because we really want to get updates especially since you're going to be working with such wonderful people in the future you know and your music is great thank you so much for being thank on the you. show thank you uh, tell people how they can reach you one more time and i have one more question for you easiest way to reach me go to youngpremex.com join my mailing list you get updates feedback you can conversate with me i spend a lot of time as far as social media and all that i'm into that marketing thing but um, other than that, Young Precise on Twitter, hot on there, 15,000K and going. Keep on following. We're trying to take it to the top. Awesome. The last question I have for you today is really, really important um, because I really want you to take to take note to this one. And this is re- the reason why I started the radio station. You know, people get discouraged. And like you said, it, it, you know, it, it can be very important to have someone behind you but what about the people who don't have someone behind them what kind of advice do you give to them who who don't really have that support system behind them dig deep then dig a little deeper Mm -hmm. dig deep again you just gotta have to find it within yourself you know if you don't have that supporting cast you gotta just be mentally wanting it bad enough to where you don't need a supporting teammate or anybody supporting you. You just want it bad enough to where you can do it yourself. Like, you got to be driven if you really want to make it in this music thing. Like, I know there's a lot of people out here making, like, crazy off-the-chain music and really talking about nothing, but somebody who gets respected in the game, like a, a J. Cole, a Kendrick, a Nipsey, Don Kennedy, Jay-Z, you know, people like that that get really respected. Like, you got to really mm-hmm. have some passion about this and be willing to tell the world how you feel awesome advice thank you so much for being in the show again and we appreciate your time young free thank you so much for your music and and thank you so much for being a father to your children that's uh, that's the biggest thing of all yeah new wave come on black man that's right that's, that's right thank you so much for being on the show we look forward to having you back and getting an update I will be back. and hearing the I'm news. I'm going to call you when we go release. I promise you'll be one of the first. You have to. You have to because I'll yeah. haunt you down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we so thank you so coming to the show. Uh, awesome. As soon as I can get out of this place, I tell you, I work a lot. So that's why I said 6 a.m. It just doesn't work for me. I'm sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? As a musician, there are days when we go 24 hours without any sleep. And I have done that. So, you know, I've paid my dues. Now I can sleep at there six. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. you. <laughs> Thank you again for being on the show. And you know what? I look forward to hearing from you again. All right. Thanks, y'all. You have a good night. All right. You too. Good night. We have had, I mean, an awesome time tonight. That is three. And I have one interview for you. You know, I told you I was going to have a music, a plethora of music tonight.